uh, would like to introduce um, the founder of Mind Candy, the company behind uh, Moshi Monsters, uh, Mr. Michael Acton Smith. So, um, we're going to do a Q&A, but I thought just before we dive into that, it might be a good idea for me just to spend a few minutes, maybe five minutes, telling you a, a tiny bit about the story of, of Moshi. Do many people know about the background to Moshi Monsters? A few. All right. For those that don't. <laughs> um, so, once upon a time, I, uh, I created a company called Mind Candy. And uh, I've always loved games. That was my passion as a kid. I thought it would be amazing to create a social gaming company. This is about 2004, when the web was really starting to, to take off, become a bit more mainstream. And uh, we launched a game called Perplex City, global treasure hunt. We raised a lot of venture capital for it. And uh, it was one of the most creative things I've ever done, but also one of the most commercially disastrous. And uh, didn't, didn't work. Um, learned a lot of lessons. Uh, it was primarily just too complex. And uh, I took myself off, and we still had a bit of money left at, at Mind Candy, and uh, desperately needed a new idea. And I was in a coffee shop one day in South London, and doodling away, as I love doing, and just creating these little monsters. And I thought, wouldn't it be amazing to, to bring them to life, to, uh, to spark these monsters um, into being? And I thought the web would be the best place to do that. I'd seen how kids, this is around 2007, were kind of uh, spending more time online. They really loved uh, that environment, and it felt very natural for them. So with some, uh, with some of the people at Mind Candy, we, we built the first version of the site. And uh, it went live about April 2008, and we were super excited, uh, but nothing happened. <laughs> For anyone that uh, has built kids' entertainment, you know um, it's very, very hard, and uh, it was frustrating. So for the first 18 months after we launched this weird and wonderful world of Moshi Monsters. Nothing really happened. We were getting a handful of sign-ups, um, and uh, it, was, it was quite a scary period. We ran out of money halfway through and had to raise a little bit more. A lot of sleepless nights, a lot of head scratching. But this is one of the reasons why I love the, the digital space, because it's almost like sculpting clay. You can tweak and iterate and uh, create a product that your audience want rather than what you think they want. So after a lot of tinkering, uh, we finally found the magic in the summer of 2009. And um, there was a lot of great stuff within Moshi. You know, I'm often asked why it's been such a success, and I wish there was one single reason. But it's uh, because the artwork really resonates with kids. We spend a lot of time on that. The characters uh, work very closely with Steve Cleverly, who's here on crafting their bios and their names, uh, the quirkiness. Um, but one of the things that really helped it, it tip back in 2009 was a, a real penny drop moment for us when we realized that kids love to be social just as much, if not more, than, than grown-ups. They love to show off and share and communicate. You know, we see it in every playground. And uh, we felt the same could be true online. And if we could build a safe way for them to do that, a safe community where they could uh, connect with their friends and send gifts and so forth. We, we could be onto something. And, and that was one of the real big turning points in the, in the roller coaster ride that's been Moshi Monsters. And in that summer of 09, things just took off like a rocket. We had the uh, traditional hockey stick graph of doing this and then suddenly just going through the roof and holding on for dear life. We started adding about one new sign up every second. Millions of new monsters were adopted by kids uh, every single month. I think we're up to about 80 million now. And so that was, uh, that was enormously uh, exciting. And then we realized that the, the stories and the characters resonated so strongly with children that maybe we could take this brand offline. And uh, we started exploring ways of uh, uh, taking it into different media. And the first deal we did was with Penguin to, to make some books. And then we've uh, created toys and there's a magazine, there was a music album that uh, went in at number four in the UK charts, beating Madonna, which we were very pleased with. Uh, we created a character called Lady Goo Goo and then got sued by Lady Gaga, and uh, I can't talk too much about that, but that was a, an interesting, interesting experience. And we've just had a huge amount of fun and uh, adventures along the way, made a lot of mistakes and, and done um, some things right as well. And, uh, and Darren, as they came on board and helped us navigate the, the complex world of, of licensing. And we definitely didn't want to just slap our label on different products. We wanted to take each product category we went into and try and find how we could find the, the moshiness of it and make it as special and, and unique as possible. 
And uh, so we're in a, a really interesting place now. You know, I think about um, very commercially successful, uh, about $250 million worth of Moshi products have been sold at retail. Um, but more importantly, we've delighted and inspired millions of kids uh, around the world. But the two big challenges we face now, and, and maybe we'll, we'll talk about them in a minute, one is how we navigate this shift from the web, which is our DNA. We're very good at building a, a flash universe online. And now, like a lot of people, trying to get ahead around uh, the mobile and, and the tablet uh, universe. And secondly, how we can develop stories from our online world and, and community. How we can take the fact that kids have a, a very special emotional connection with their monster and how we can then translate that into a, a more linear uh, story, whether that be a two-minute YouTube video, an 11-minute cartoon, or uh, an 80-minute uh, feature-length film. And a uh, lot, of, lot of interesting meetings discussing all this. And uh, yeah, hopefully we can dive into that. So that's the five... 0.5-minute uh, update on Moshi, and uh, we'll do some questions. Thank you. Great. Thanks, Michael. <laughs> so now that you've, you've got this, uh, this brand that is bigger than Madonna, uh, uh, how, uh, how much, uh, how much is, is it luck and how much is it science to... Uh, it's very interesting that you said uh, it wasn't uh, necessarily a, a hit from, from the moment that it, that it launched. Uh, it, is that the challenge with, with, with kids' properties in, in this space, that there is luck and science behind it? I think so, absolutely. There's, there's no silver bullet to creating great content in the kids' space or in any space. Uh, it's great timing. It's amazing talent. Uh, it's, uh, it's a little bit of luck and a sprinkling of magic. And, uh, you know, we captured that with, with Moshi Monsters. But as I said during that introduction, I think one of the advantages we had was that we could um, tweak and iterate and polish and evolve as we went. We didn't have to get it right straight out of the gate, uh, where you do if you're launching a, a movie or a, or a music album. Um, or a traditional cartoon show. And that's true, I think that's helped us because a lot of our DNA comes from uh, the uh, web background, startups moving very fast, launching a product, uh, looking at the data, and pivoting and, and trying something new. And if you look at a lot of successful tech companies, they often start in a different way. Instagram started as a location-based sharing app. They realized photos were most popular, they jumped onto that. Um, and I wonder how many shows, cartoons uh, in the past that haven't worked, might have worked if they had that leeway of kind of diving in and realizing, oh, that character was the, should have been the hero or that story twist should have, could have changed things. So almost saying that uh, by being digital, you were, you were given a, a period where failure wasn't necessarily a problem. You were able to, to use that and to, to, to develop it and move on and, and move into something that was, did become successful. Yes, yeah. Um, so I think that there's two ways that startups usually fail. Uh, one is they run out of money, uh, and the second is when the, the founding team lose interest. And uh, so fortunately, we had uh, just about enough money to keep us going. And I still, I felt deep in my gut that there was something special here and worth fighting for. And uh, so, <coughs> excuse me. Um, so yeah, we, we kept going for, for many months until it finally clicked. And as, as they say in the web world, we got product market fit. And then, uh, then it was just about scaling and, and holding on. And I think people found it most fascinating that, that you started this product uh, digitally. And it wasn't just a traditional television show or, or, or movie. Um, I think what's most interesting, perhaps, for, for MIPCOM particularly, is, is that you've now started to, to move into those worlds. Now, after five years, you've starting to, to branch out. I think there's a, a, we have a trailer for, for the new feature film that, that you're going to, going to be making, and also making a, a TV series as well, right? Yes, I, should, we, uh, should we have a look at the trailer? It's now a good time. Anyone want to see it? Yes. Okay. Yeah. I, good. <laughs> uh, At least they said yes. <laughs> we, um, I don't think we've, have we shown this before? Yeah. Not the trailer, sorry. This, I think is, this is the opening two or three minutes of the, of the movie. And uh, um, Jocelyn, I'll just talk a tiny bit about it before, before we show it. Uh, Jocelyn came on board to produce it. Jocelyn Stevenson, very experienced in, in the kids' space. We've uh, never made a movie before and didn't really know what we were doing <laughs> and uh, have learnt uh, how difficult it, it actually is. And uh, we, um, 
we, we didn't quite know how we were going to translate the Moshi world into a, a film. We had a chat to a few studios and a lot of different people. And in the end, we thought, um, why don't we just uh, try and do it ourselves? So we financed the movie ourselves. We, um, uh, Steve wrote it, uh, Jocelyn produced it, and then we used an external uh, animation team. And, uh, and then Universal have come on board um, as our distribution partner, and it's going to be uh, released uh, December of this year. So I think the whole project uh, is less than a year, isn't that right? And uh, yeah, so um, it's been a, a whirlwind, amazing experience. Um, but I would definitely rather do it that way, keep it in-house, um, than give it, uh, give it away and have it turned into something else. So um, yeah, let's, uh, let's have a little look if this works. I knew you were worried about that bridge, but uh, goodness me, it was safe as houses. Oh, me, oh, oh. coming through. Fantastic. Uh, what made you decide to do uh, the feature and the, the TV series, and, and, and which sort of came first, or why you decided to do the, the film first? Well, uh, a few years ago, we started experimenting with um, just very short form uh, cartoons on YouTube, and uh, just two or three minute little music video clips, which were hugely popular with kids. And, uh, and so then we started thinking, would a cartoon or film make more sense? And I think we were just a little more excited about doing a film. And uh, so that's, uh, that's where the momentum was. And uh, the cartoon, we're thinking, is, is at a slightly earlier stage. Uh, we're planning uh, 52, 11 minutes and having a lot of conversations here 
at MIP. Um, but yeah, the film is, is definitely the primary focus at the moment. Um, and what are the sort of challenges for, for you? It must be both exciting and extremely nervous to be in this world where, where as you say, you're starting to talk to uh, broadcasters and, and distributors and, and the kids' world. And, and it's obviously a very different world than perhaps the, the tech, tech world. Uh, what's, uh, what's your thought about that moving into, into that, this business? Yeah, it's been a, a quite steep, le steep learning curve. Luckily, as I say, we've got Jocelyn on board to, uh, to help navigate a lot of that. But, um, you know, we've, we've done it uh, a few different times uh, in the history of Mind Candy. Uh, we learned very quickly about the toy industry and the book industry and the magazine industry. So we think, um, you know, this, I, I'm just super excited to be in the entertainment world at, at this moment as new technologies are emerging so quickly, new devices, new platforms. I mean, it's scary because things move so fast, but there are so many opportunities as well. The old business models don't necessarily apply. So if you are very open-minded and... Uh, uh, innovative and a little playful, you can just try new things. And uh, they're not all going to work, but um, if you get a few right, then, then I think you can do all right. Uh, in the UK, obviously, it's a huge hit. Uh, and, I, and you told me earlier that you have around 80 million uh, registered users for, for Moshi. Uh, what's the global reach of, of the brand? So the UK definitely has been our biggest market by, by quite a while. I think it's the number one uh, licensed um, kids property in the UK. Um, and we're getting there around the world. We haven't translated into other languages. We did uh, a version in Spanish, but um, uh, didn't develop that too deeply. Uh, the US is our big focus now, and we're starting to see uh, some momentum there. Uh, and then I think when we move into mobile and tablet, that's where we will focus more on expanding globally. Um, when we built Moshi originally, it was just in English. We didn't really think about international expansion, so it'd be much easier with that in the back of our mind as we move on to new platforms. Yeah. Uh, you mentioned there in terms of the, the shift into perhaps a world, uh, it, you know, we had earlier questions about uh, apps and it really is a focus at the moment. You created this as a, as a, a web property um, and now that kids, uh, every child you, you, know, you meet has a, has a tablet, uh, how is the challenge moving into, into a world that is so heavily focused in, in, in that side of the things? I'll be honest, it's been really tough. Yeah, we, we thought we'd waltz in. Uh, <laughs> and uh, have a successful uh, app. Um, and as most people have found, that, that universe is really tough. Um, uh, it's great because anyone can create an app, but uh, that's the downside as well. There's so much content out there, and most of it's for free for kids. And what we're seeing is you know, they'll go in and play with one app and then burn out very quickly and try something new. And uh, that was different in, in the web days, where it was much more expensive and a longer process to build a very deep uh, virtual world. So we've been scratching our head and, and thinking a lot about this. Um, I don't think there's one right answer. Uh, there's a lot of things you've got to get right from monetization, as we heard earlier, you know, the whole in-app purchase challenge, which I can talk a bit about. Um, and uh, we have, we've launched a couple of small apps with Moshi, and they've, they've done OK. Uh, we've been developing some other apps and put those on hold and tried again. And uh, what I think will happen next um, is we're going to move to a new sort of phase of, of sort of the kids and the app store is rather than these very light, quick uh, experiences where kids bounce in and out, we'll see much larger budgets and much bigger app projects uh, built for kids where uh, more community, more social, um, where they, they uh, connect with an app for much, much longer. And uh, that's our bet and, and that's what we're building uh, with Moshi and, and some of the new brands that we're developing at Mind Candy. With the, uh, with the move into, into the sort of entertainment side of things, producing uh, content for, for Moshi in, in this way, is that a separate conversation to the app, or, or is that all, all part of the same, same process? Uh, it's all interconnected. Uh, we have to make sure, as anyone creating uh, stories and characters on, on different platforms, that it all uh, ties up. So yeah, uh, a lot of the company is involved in a lot of these different discussions. But I think what the, the, the trickiest, the, the nuttiest challenge we're trying to crack is, is definitely in the, the mobile and tablet space. That's where we believe the center of gravity for the Moshi IP will move to if it, if it hasn't already, and we absolutely need to be there. You know, we're moving fast to a, a world where pretty much every kid will have uh, a tablet, not just uh, as we see at the moment where most uh, are using their parents' tablets, but you know, that's, uh, that's a fascinating um, uh, opportunity. Uh, hundreds of millions of kids around the world with their own tablets, the cheaper Android tablets coming out now. 
Um, and they'll not just play games on there, but they'll be doing their homework, they'll be listening to music, they'll be watching cartoons, and they'll be creating their own content. And uh, I'm super excited to be playing around in that space and, and seeing what can be created. Uh, you sort of alluded to their uh, other projects, I guess perhaps Mind Candy, uh, expanding into, into to other areas. Uh, perhaps it'd be interesting to hear sort of some of the, the, the broad things that you are looking to do. And I presume that, that this app world and this, this side of the business is, is what you're probably looking to, to move into, right? Yeah, we're definitely shifting our, our DNA, as I say, away from the, the web to uh, mobile, as pretty much every, every company is. Um, and uh, it's... We, we've learned a lot building Moshi, and, and so we, um, we don't want to take our eye off that ball because that's still the, the heart of the company. But um, we've got so many new ideas, and we've probably got about three um, really exciting, completely new IPs uh, bubbling away, being cooked in our, our workshops. And uh, they're at various stages of, of development, um, and uh, we only want to put them out when we feel really, really proud of them. But our philosophy is they will always start, these new brands will always start in the, the mobile and tablet space. And uh, if they're successful, um, then we will start expanding them into different media. So we'll look at creating cartoons and toys and books. If they're not successful, we'll, uh, we'll never talk of them again. Uh, are they all in the, in the kids' space? Uh, yes, kids is kind of um, an area where we've yeah, learned a lot. Um, kids and family is how we think about it. So some of the, the new things we're developing are for a slightly older um, audience. Uh, Moshi Mums is an area that we've, we've been very intrigued by, and uh, there's a lot of mums and dads that, that like playing Moshi. So we've got a few projects uh, being developed uh, for them, and uh, there's a project for, for aimed more at boys, slightly older audience, and yeah, a few other Mums well. Nets Monsters, that's uh, the next, uh, next phase. Um, obviously, uh, kids' uh, properties, when they do, uh, do work, are incredibly valuable. Um, we look at uh, the fact that the Teletubbies, uh, DHX just bought Teletubbies, uh, uh, owner uh, Ragdoll Worldwide, and um, you, know, you look at the, the likes of Peppa Pig, and that's obviously transformed uh, the company that, behind that. Um, you must have had a few, uh, few interested parties in, in yourself in, in the Moshi uh, days, is that right? Yes. Yeah. Fair, fair, fair. No, yeah. <laughs> yes, no, we've had... When are you going to sell the company? <laughs> um, we've had a lot of, lot of interesting conversations, and we could sell the company and all sail off on our yachts and drink cocktails on uh, islands. Um, but, you know, I, I love what I do. I think this is an, an amazing industry, as I say. Very, very lucky to work in it with such uh, passionate, creative people. And I think it would be a shame to step away and watch from the sidelines during probably the most exciting period over the next couple of years. So we definitely want to, to double down and keep building. And uh, as I say, and the challenge then is to, to move from a one product company to a multiple product company. And that's easier said than done. The old uh, difficult second album challenge that we're, uh, we're grappling with. What, uh, you're obviously here at MIPCOM and MIPCOM Junior for, for the next few days. What are the, the types of conversations that, that you're, who are you looking to meet and, and what are the sort of conversations that you're looking to have uh, over this week? Well, I, I'm a bit of a conference junkie, so I, I just love listening to random speeches and overhearing uh, strange meetings in coffee shops, so beware if you see me sitting near you. Um, and uh, yeah, no, we're, we're chatting to everyone from existing partners here uh, to... Um, animation studios, to broadcast partners for our cartoon, to a whole host of different stuff. And again, just like everyone, trying to figure out where, where the world is going. You, you seem to spend a lot of time in coffee shops. I think that's a tip, guys, if you see him, uh, buy, him a, buy him a cup of coffee. Um, I think we're going to open it out to, to the, the crowd. So if anyone's got any questions uh, for Michael, please, uh, please let us know. Any, uh, any there? One here at the front. Yes, hello. Oh, sorry. Uh, Mark okay. from uh, Wig Up TV. Um, I was just wondering, what was your dream as a kid growing up? And um, how much of a competitor is uh, Club Penguin for you? Uh, so question one, um, had a lot of different dreams. BMX stunt rider, uh, astronaut, rock star, football player. Um, bit of a wild imagination. <laughs> Uh, but I think games, uh, games were the most exciting thing for me. I got a, a ZX Spectrum when I was quite young. Don't know if anyone remembers that. This magical black box with rubber keys and 48K of memory. And that kind of opened up a whole new world of imagination. And the second question, Club Penguin um, is, a, is a great product. Uh, Disney bought them a few years ago um, for a few hundred million dollars. And uh, they, like us, have, have had some challenges moving from the web to the mobile and, and platform, uh, the, the tablet world. Um, 
And where I see more our competitors emerging from now are definitely um, in the App Store. You know, it's, it's everything from uh, Talking Tom to Temple Run to Angry Birds, you know, these extraordinary apps getting tens and tens of millions of downloads. Um, and that's, that's where kids are spending a lot of their time these days. So uh, now that you've achieved rock star status, uh, Michael, um, do you see yourself as kind of a Richard Branson, sort of the head of, you know, the way Virgin market themselves under Branson? Anytime we hear about Moshi, we see you, which is not a bad thing. Um, in, in, uh, in a sense, it's a little bit like Michael O'Leary of Ryanair. Um, I, I think it brings a, a very, I'm very much like yeah. Michael O'Leary. Yeah. <laughs> Bring, brings a lot of good publicity. Um, but I, I was just interested in finding out what, what, what happened to Moshi TV. It seemed like a great idea. Is that still going? Uh, yeah, so two parts there. I, you know, I, I love businesses that are, are led by sort of colorful uh, characters at, at the helm. It just gives them a bit more soul than a, a big uh, corporation. So I love Richard Branson. And uh, um, yeah, that's kind of accidentally happened at, at Moshi with my Mr. Moshi persona. Um, and to the second question, Moshi TV, uh, we were actually here uh, at MIP, I think in 2010, uh, excitedly announcing Moshi TV, and, and we wanted to create this uh, network for kids that was going to rival uh, YouTube, and uh, unfortunately it didn't quite pan out the way we hoped. I think we had the right idea, the right philosophy, but um, going up against YouTube proved harder than we thought. <laughs> They're a, they're a pretty successful company. So our thinking now, and like a lot of other people, is it's smarter to build uh, on top of YouTube, their extraordinary infrastructure, and um, uh, harness that rather than trying to, to create something standalone. So we have a, a Moshi Monsters um, channel on YouTube, um, which parents love and um, kids um, watch with their parents. Um, there's a challenge, of course, kids love YouTube, but they're not really supposed to be on there until they're over 13. Uh, and I think the next big nut to crack is um, uh, video content cartoons on, on mobile and, and tablet devices, and I know a lot of people are, are working on that at the moment. The Michael Leary of the kids' business, uh, as, no, you, as you'll be. Don't, uh, no journalists write that down. <laughs> That's, I prefer a polite version of Bob Geldof. That's a better one. <laughs> Any others? Any other questions for, yeah. for, the, for the Bob Geldof of, Here. of kids' team? Uh, Roger Berman of uh, Zenworks Licensing in Tokyo. Um, I'm interested in the comment you made about your developing the film uh, independently on your own. Um, Rovio, also of Angry Birds, they decided to finance it all themselves, I believe. This sort of approach of, you know, retain the control, was this sort of basically because you want to retain the control on the creator side, or... Is it more uh, akin to the fact that maybe the studios um, might not be so, uh, the return on the investment from the studio's point of view might not be as much for them? What was your thinking behind that process? Um, I'm pretty much uh, a megalomaniac, so I thought it was just more fun to do it ourselves. Um, no, I'm kidding. We, we just thought, as I said earlier, that the world is changing and, and the old ways of doing things aren't necessarily the right ways of doing things. So. Who knows, it, it could turn out to be um, uh, a mistake, but the, my sense is, my gut feeling is it, it's the right way to do it. I also didn't want to risk selling an option in Moshi and, and having it put in a drawer for years and years and appear in 2027. Um, and I think it's extraordinary how fast we've gone from saying, let's make a film, to having it appear in theaters across the UK you know, in less than a year. That's, that's really exciting. So um, we try and approach that with uh, most of the things we do. Any, any others? Uh, interested that you, uh, you mentioned uh, Jocelyn, I think, sitting over there, the, the hiring, uh, hiring her uh, recently. Um, what's the best way of, of, of getting in touch with, with you, Michael? What's, uh, if people have got um, you know, ideas and, and, and plans that they could work with Moshi, what's the, what's the best suggestion to... Uh, find me in coffee shops is a good start. Um, I love Twitter. I'm acting on Twitter, so feel free to hit me up there. Um, I'm going to be next door for a while um, in the Meet the Speaker session, so come and chat. Or um, if you see Darren or Steve or Jocelyn at the front row there, uh, they're all moshy and mind candied up, so they'll, they'll be happy to chat to anyone. Fantastic, fantastic. I wonder whether it's worth just touching on the, um, the revenue and the monetization side of things, because sure. this is something I get asked a, an awful lot. 
um, and we're grappling with this as, as everyone is. Um, you know, it's really frustrating to look at companies like uh, King. Um, uh, not frustrating, but you know, you've got to admire them. Candy Crush Saga, I think, has made about 180 million dollars in the last six months, uh, and um, that's hard to do in the kids space if if you can't do any in-app purchase. And I personally believe there is an opportunity to, to do in-app purchase as long as it's done ethically and sensibly by the developers. When you think about it, it's, uh, you know, you could, a parent could buy a game or a DVD for a child, 10 or 20 or 30 or 40, 50 euros, uh, or in-app purchase games allow you to play for free and then you can spend as much or as little as you want. And again, um, yeah, I could talk about that for a while, but I, I don't think it's a binary thing. It's not that in-app purchase shouldn't be for kids' products. And just the, the other final thing I want to say in it is that there's not a huge amount of money being made in the kids' space in the, the tablet and mobile world yet, but there will be. It's just because it's early days. It's only a couple of years since the iPad first came out. Parents are very happy to spend money on amazing entertainment for their kids. You know, look at um, Despicable Me 2, the most profitable film in Universal's history. I think about $76 million to make, $800 million gross already. So when the tablet becomes the d dominant entertainment device, we're going to see some extraordinary success stories there. So anyone splashing around and doing the learnings now is going to be very well positioned. There's quite a lot of competition in that world, though, isn't there? I mean, you see the big, big companies, the studios and, uh, and the big tech companies in that world. Is there something to, to be said, perhaps, for being a bit more nimble in, in, in getting into, into making a, a success to come out of the app world? Yes, definitely. I, I think that the faster you can um, produce uh, content, the, the better, and then learn from what your audience likes and, and doesn't like. Uh, yeah, there's nothing worse than spending a year or two on a project and launching it and realizing it, it doesn't click at all. Yeah, yeah good. Well, Michael, uh, thank you very much for, for that. That was fascinating uh, to learn a bit more about Moshi Monsters. Um, I wonder if we could just give him a big, uh, big round of applause.